Okay, so this is a, a video about PLCs and um, and a particular style of programming. So in the software world, there's a thing called design patterns, and um, essentially a design pattern is is what it is. You know what it actually means. It's it's a pattern that is designed. So um, there are literally thousands of, of different design patterns. Now it's not a, a term that's used commonly in the in the uh, PLC world, but if if I say to you, you know, sequencer, you know, that is essentially a design pattern. That's that's what what it is basically. You know? so if you if you work a way on how to present information to essentially for an HMI, so you've got a little path how the software sort of flows. Essentially, what you're making is is a design pattern, and um, and if you program PLCs over a period of time, you know how to put these patterns together. That, that's essentially what it boils down to, even if you don't know what the word actually means, design pattern. So the design pattern that sort of sits there on, on the podium in, in the PLC world, and on logic resolvers, whatever you want to call them, is this thing called sequencers, or more accurately, a, a state machine. So the state machine essentially is a uh, something that moves from state to state to state and the state is sort of like how can we say um you know you're make you're making a cup of tea i'm in the state of making a cup of tea uh, i walk to the front room i'm in the front room that's the next state i go i go upstairs um upstairs that's the next state that type of stuff so in in machine terms it would be like the the, the state is the valve is in the home position the next state is the valve is in the out position and uh, the next state is um, a part is detected or something like this, or no, a part is um, present. So these are the states. And I'm moving from one state to the next um, are conditions. So if we look at this, for example, so, so this is a fictitious ATM machine. So we're in an idle state, and the machine is sitting there waiting for someone to put a card in. And here we have some conditions. So we want to get, detect a card. If we detect a card, okay, it moves to the next state, which is card is inserted. And maybe in that state, it, it drives a valve, starts a motor. So this would be flow valve one or motor 102, you know, this type of stuff. And then we would read the, the event because of that. So it would be um, Valve 101 is in the home. Is it true? Yes. Is uh, the motor 102 home? Yes. True. Move on to the next state. In other words, card inserted. So this is what you do. Now, whether you choose to perform the action here or here is all relative to how you um, you write your sequence. Okay? okay. In reality, it's probably a combination of, of of both these things. You know, you put an action here and an action here, but you know, you you. I mean, really, you just want to try and keep to one idea, you know, one, one good idea, and and run with it. It's the mix and match, match in the idea. So that's that. That's a sequencer. It's, you know, the idea is very simple, basically. But saying that, sequencers can become really, really complicated. So if we just come over here and let me just pull up something over here on DuckDuckGo over here. And I'm just going to do a state machine, state machine, um, a compiler, for example. So this is a, for compiling um, software languages. So we'll just pull up some images there. And I've done it, but I've seen these things before because I actually did write a compiler. And here we go. Here's one for a compiler. So that's one little bit of a compiler. Or is it? Yeah, for a compiler. This is something. What is it? Looks like it's uh, detecting a type of number. Yeah, detecting a type of number. But these things can become hell of a complicated. So here we go. You can see the complication sort of creeping into it. Oh, don't know what happened there. Uh, but you can see the complications, and, and and literally these things can be pages and pages and pages long. They can get that that complicated. 
Okay, so don't let the, um, the, the idea of, of the simplicity of a, of a state machine um, fool you because you know the complexity I'm just trying to look for another one that's even even more busy now so I've shown you this sort of bubble format of how we describe a sequencer which is like it's but there are other ways of describing it so uh, if I just sort of push it here's here's another one of some form okay sort of <laughs> That's a, that's yeah that's a bit novel the way they've done that <laughs> it's actually a sort of a building plan with a sequence in it yeah so as you can see there are many different uh, shapes and sizes of sequences and symbols and all the rest of it eh? okay so so this is a version of a sequencer come to the PLC software not that um, PLC software and this is a sequencer in SCL basically hey um, now the reason I've done SCL is because I was looking at um, some BNR stuff which is the brand of PLC and um, looking at some of the tutorials basically because potentially have a role BNR and um, I noticed that they, they like to push the SCL language um, as I've noticed, um, a lot of the younger generation, or, or sort of programmers out there, you know, um, like this S SCL language. Yeah, yeah. Pros and cons. You know, it's good, bad. You know, unfortunately, um, software writing, as a general rule, is quite uh, contentious, and there's a lot of sort of tribal tribal law sitting around how people write software you know but essentially you, you'll find that there's some thread of thinking in in the plc world you know certain people say no no the software must be a simple that maintenance guy can can look at it and and be able to deal with it um, you know and then there's some applications where it is a very complicated control system they're not like pick and place you know is, is a box there yes pick the box up if there's no box there then you're waiting for a box not that type of complications i mean complications as in what's a tension on a pipe you know uh, maintaining constant tension moving it forward in with constant tension or possibly controlling the level of a tank you know so that would be a pnid well, pid block not a pnid so be a PID block or something like that, but the software um, doing that. So PID block, yeah, it is actually quite simple in, in, in its own right. It's only sort of three three equations, really, you know, your proportional integral and derivative. And uh, literally, if you looked at the code, it, it would be no more complicated than something like this. But the PID control, the theory of PID control, is is can be a horrendous subject, basically, yeah. So again, the simplicity of it can fool you, basically. Yeah. So, all right, let's not get distracted over here. So, this is a sequencer. So we're saying fictitious ATM is in idle state. Yeah, we want a card to be inserted. That's what we're looking for as an event. And then we do something when that card is inserted. Eh? So we say insert card handler. Then it says, okay, so the card is inserted. So this one here is actually sort of the action of putting the card in and this is when it is actually in and then we say oh you were waiting for him put his pin number in there so he starts putting his pin number in and then we run off and call this enter pin handler basically or function function coin and off it does okay so you can see the idea is simple it's a simple idea and just sort of I've um, encapsulated it within a folder so this is everything to do with an ATM I've used function calls yeah here yeah. function block that could have maybe been a function call. I don't think so I think I needed some static data over here but anyway but that's a general idea so if I come to my little squiggle of a diagram over here this guy here let me do something over here. Let's go control all, select all, 
Oops, try that again. Control, Control, all, right click, and let's just glue all this together. Um, arrange, 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 convert, convert shapes. Um, let's come here. I know there is a way to put it all together. Um, where does it go now? Um, Maybe we can group it. Where's my group function? Yeah, this this is certainly a, a thing when you're dealing with so many packages at one time. You have to sort of remember where where things are. Arrange. Here we are. Group. So let's group it. Okay. So we just grouped it. So this whole thing is acting as one. So if you look at this, okay, and let's see if we can rotate it. Um, flip, flip, arrange, here we go, so let's do this, no, I'll do it like as simple as that, eh? so if I just turn that on its side, like that for example, okay, so it's just sort of, sort of a different view of it, so this is the first state, these are the conditions, this is the next state, um, these are the outputs, these are the conditions, you know. so you get the idea, eh? let's just turn it on its side basically, come to the PLC, so this is Siemens TIA. So this is a sort of a, one of the flagship PLCs out there. Um, so I came over here, and I just said I wanted a new block. And we could come over here. There's, there's a language called Graph, and I said, and we say, okay. So see that you can't do that basically. So you can't do that right graph there so you could come here you can't do it over here but you can do it oh where did it go where did it go click click off it and then oh where did it go ah, there we go see these little odds quirks with with these packages so eh? so there's graph over there okay now it appears so I just say OK. Now remember, I just got that diagram and I sort of flipped it on its side. So I go OK. Probably take a little while for something to happen. It is very resource hungry. This uh, semen stuff. It always has been. I don't know why, but anyway. Um, so Siemens is not not as intuitive as, as some packages, and um, certainly TIA. Yeah, they sort of kept a lot of the um, the old way of doing it. okay and here you go so can you see there's a state there's a transition okay from one state to the next I could come over here I can do that I could add another one you see I'm adding the states in there and so and so and so come on let's put a, there let's do that okay I can add so moving from there to there to there these are sort of the conditions of moving from one state is, is, if I click here I can put a contact in there okay etc 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 so you see see how it goes okay so essentially this is a package called graph and it does a, a state machine so it explicitly deals with that idea basically now this is very good yeah I must admit it, it, it is good but um, I would imagine or I do know I'm not, don't, I don't imagine that if you use this language you have much more control and, and, and you're, you're much more in control of what you can do and you can add features to it and all the rest of it. but as you can do in the other one but the other one explicitly deals with this concept of, of a of a um, sequencer anyway so that's what we've got to say about sequencers um, as for good programming practices yeah it's a bit of a contentious issue but um, you see I've followed some of them see it's very readable this code it's idle card inserted pin entered option selected no magic numbers sitting anywhere um, clearly describe ATM that's the next state 
that's an event okay uh, and there's the next date being updated that's an handler called insert card handler which happens to be that one or that, that happens to flow onto that one if everything is okay like I said it could it could if I went to insert card handler it could have called a fault state up okay so in reality it, it'll have a, a route to go to whatever state you program it to do so I say it's a card inserted state because remember like I said if you look at some of these um, where did it go where did it go if you look at some of these um, state machines you can see state, ma state machine now I know the compilers are particularly hairy things uh, um, if you ever want a programming challenge write a compiler anyway so as you can see see this so let's look at something here so uh, see for this for example this state here whatever it is you can go to that state there or that state there okay and like I say these things can become very 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 complicated see here's another view of a state machine you probably can't see that but anyway um, and and just because it's got the word machine in it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's for a machine. You know, it could be a calculation. It could be, it could be anything. You know, state state machine is not for specifically a machine. You know, it could be, it could be loads of things. Okay. So anyway, just trying to find one that's um, sort of a little bit complicated and hairy. Yeah, here we are, a little bit complicated. Here we go. So. In main states, okay. So there's a main state. They now you even look at substates, okay. We have substates, substates, you know. So as you can see, but pretty basic stuff, really. Anyway, thanks for listening. Cheers, bye.